and it just took forever. <laughs> but then it was leaking and the whole bathroom was basically flooded and full of water. <laughs> if you don't talk about it, I forgot. <laughs> now I remember. <laughs> I don't know. I burn? Oh my god. I so try, I so try not. <laughs> Actually, I'm doing nothing. <laughs> what if I'm actually so you're just faking it? <laughs> I would look at a baby and go like, oh my god, I need a baby now. Like, my ovaries are on fire. Like, <laughs> no, that never happened to me. Mr. Davidson? Yeah. <laughs> well? Yes. <laughs> always the peace sign. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Today is the first sit down kind of video. But <laughs> bist du gerne in der Kamera? Ja. Yeah. Machst du gerne Videos? Ja. Yeah. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm currently very pregnant. Boob. Look at that. <laughs> I'm currently 38 weeks pregnant. And um, I really wanted to make a video of Nora's birth. Nora's birth kind of story. I'm worried that once the second baby is here, it might alter the memory. I'm a little bit sad that we didn't film anything when it happened or when the memory was still fresh because I have a feeling I forgot most of it which is one of the reasons I asked Ma to be here <laughs> to kind of fill in some of the gaps maybe there's no script or anything um, just going basically from the top of my head what kind of happened starting with the pregnancy itself with Nora was pretty straightforward and pretty easy pretty much textbook didn't have any complications and then at 38 weeks I stopped working and basically stayed home I for two weeks mama. so another try without baby <laughs> her due date was the 4th of March fun fact now my due date is the 4th of July so we have something about the 4th <laughs> and once uh, the 4th came Nothing happened. And nothing happened for two more days. And then sixth in the evening, I think, so. I think midnight maybe, I kind of started feeling something. But it was about three o'clock that I think my contractions actually started. It wasn't that bad, but I started timing it on one of those apps. And it was immediately three minutes apart. And I remembered that once it's within five minutes apart, you should go to the hospital. So I was kind of like, okay, it's already starting at three minutes apart. That's a little bit concerning. So I called the hospital and they basically said, if you are feeling fine and you don't feel it's very painful, then you can stay home. And that the process can take a long time. So even with it, if it's every three minutes um, it's still fine so I thought okay and they said if I feel a lot of pain then I should come in so <clears throat> I basically went to take a shower uh, grabbed all you know my hospital bag and all the last minute kind of things and I think it was the shower was still fine but over the time it kind of progressively got stronger and it was really all every three minutes and about 30 seconds to one minute pretty intense from the beginning i think it was around 5 30 that we set off to the hospital mm. i think we arrived around 6 a.m in the hospital so the year of the pig is actually really really popular in china so you can see that birth rates in china are not always the same they go up really really high during like lucky years so those are the pig year the dragon year yeah. what other years are lucky uh i don't know actually i don't really follow the tradition <laughs> very much. worst chinese ever I, I, I actually really don't know it's, <laughs> it's 
Obviously. Okay, I know it's it's <clears throat> Dragon is really really popular though. Dr mm. Dragon is like I think the number one, and Pig might be the second one because Pig um, in Chinese horoscope means you basically get rich without doing much. <laughs> it basically means you have you can be lazy, but you will still have all the fortune and all the luck. That was not necessary. We didn't plan for the pig specifically, but anyways, um, we were at the beginning of the pig year because uh, every zodiac animal year in China works around the Chinese calendar, which means the Chinese New Year starts the new zodiac, which means in that year it was sometime in February. And um, her being born in the beginning of March, it had kind of just started, so it wasn't that busy yet. So they admitted us and let us stay in the hospital. I think if it would have been like super, super busy, mm. they might have turned me away. I'm not sure because it's private. It's a private hospital, it's a United Family. Um, it's very expensive to give birth there. It's kind of the number one in Beijing. And um, so they don't necessarily turn people away, especially foreigners. I was only one centimeter dilated and you need to dilate from 0 to 10 centimeters and 1 centimeter is not a lot. A lot of people show up at the hospital already over 4 centimeters dilated. We were admitted and within the next many 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 hours of having contractions every 3 minutes I only dilated half a centimeter. So I went, I think it was like 12 or 13 hours later mm. that I was 1.5 centimeters dilated. Now we had a birth course before um, at around 38 weeks and I remember from that course that she said something like you should not get an epidural until you're around 4 centimeters dilated because it could slow your birth down. And I had an irrational fear of having to have a C-section. Basically, when you say you're slowing the labor down, it is a higher chance basically to end up not dilating enough or not progressing the labor to end up having a C-section. So I was like, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to hold on until I'm at least four centimeters and then I'm going to get the epidural. And if it's the last thing that I do, but it was 13 hours, I think in total. And I did everything. I bounced on the ball. I did all kinds of trying and breathing. Uh, I got into the tub. So uh, Beijing United Family has a bathtub. And that sounded like a lovely idea because they always say that um, water makes the pain less. So that ended up being totally terrible because the bathtub filled so slowly that took like at least half an hour maybe an hour right i think so that was, it was forever because <laughs> the point was it had a door because you're super pregnant in labor you can't get into a tub it's way too d dangerous to get into a tub so basically it's like a sitting tub and it has a door so you need to get in when it's like a few centimeters basically filled at the bottom up until like the ledge of the door and then you need to sit in it and close the door so that the water can fill up and it just took forever <laughs> and then I was in it for like I don't know I, do you remember the time if you don't talk about it I forgot <laughs> now I remember I thought I brought you here so that you yes. could fill in the gap <laughs> now, now, now I remember yes <laughs> kind of funny yeah uh, yeah. But the best thing was, I was in the tub for a little bit, and I, I remember it was soothing. I remember it was quite a nice kind of experience. But then it was leaking, and the whole bathroom was basically flooded and full of water. And then they, we, we called the nurses and we were like, yeah, this thing is kind of leaking. <laughs> and they were like, oh, yeah, because we never use it. I'm like, what? I thought this is one of the main selling points of this labor room. But uh, yeah, apparently no Chinese would ever consider getting into a bathtub during labor. <laughs> and I mean, the, 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 the amount of... But it doesn't make sense, because that hospital, lots of foreigners go in there. Yeah, but to come on, the, the ratio of foreigners versus Chinese is still 90-10. No. No. 
Come on, I've been. To, you have because been to like two no, checkups there. Yeah, I went to the two checkup. <laughs> okay, so b basically, if I go to the checkup, hundred percent of the rate I see foreigners. So, no, 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 no. It's yes, definitely not true. Yeah. I, I'm willing to debate you on that right. and find the statistics, but right. it's right. definitely way, way, way more. Okay, Chinese. okay, all right. Like. Same with Oasis. Same. There, okay. the there's not enough foreigners to make up that many okay. births mm -hmm. in Beijing. All right. So, yeah, not that many people use that. So the the pool was leaking. The bathtub it was leaking. Water all over the floor. So I wasn't actually in there for very long, until they were like, okay, let's drain the thing and get out. So it's like kind of disappointed. Probably a shower would have worked better. So that pool, like, like that bathtub was definitely overrated. I have no like timestamps of anything because I didn't, I didn't record anything. I didn't make any notes, which I think I now know better because honestly, if you're going to give birth, my number one tip for like the hospital is that you document a little bit. I think it's super interesting to look back and also like compare if you have multiple kids but it was about that many hours that they constantly kept asking me if I want an epidural the nurse is pretty much from pretty much walking into the hospital who <laughs> were asking me if I yes, wanted an epidural give me some peer pressure <laughs> and, and I was like in the beginning I was like no I'm totally going to do this I'm gonna dilate by myself I can do this so, um, they kept coming back every hour or so, not, they kept, they were there a lot all the time checking in, but like about every hour or every one and a half hours, they were asking if I want an epidural now. And you could see in the face of the nurses, they were like, they were like suffering with me. <laughs> they, they were like, you're in so much pain, do you want an epidural? And they didn't have any other options. So in the UK and, um. I think also in Germany, maybe they have laughing gas, for example, as a pain um, kind of management tool. Mm -hmm. So you can in inhale laughing gas and that's kind of takes the edge off. But they didn't have anything apart from a not really functioning bathtub <clears throat> and like a birthing ball. And the nurses were helpful, like the midwives were trying to help with like positions and massages and stuff, but nothing really helped. I finally caved at around 12 or 13 hours in the hospital. Because he keeps saying like, oh, there's no harm, no worries, you know, yeah. we do, we've done this so many times. Yeah. And, uh, so it's kind of because at the beginning, I think uh, you really want to give it a natural birth, you know, the, everything. It's still a Every, natural birth. I, every, still, I mean, I mean the, whole, the whole thing. Unmedicated. Yeah, a whole unmedicated thing birth. unmedicated. Yes, but... Yes. Anyways, the, I, yeah, the second thing I was so worried about is to be paralyzed. Mm. I was, because there's like one in 250,000 chance mm. that you get paralyzed during ep epidural. It's like really, really tiny chance, but I was so scared of it. So I was like in tears because I was in so much pain. I was like, basically, I think I'm, I was shouting most of the time, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't remember much. Shouting, but yelling. <laughs> crying. Crying, yes. And um, I was in so much pain that I, and I was 1.5 centimeters dilated. So it wasn't going anywhere. So finally I was like, can you get me? Yes, give me a bedouille. But like, can you please not paralyze me? And the guy was this Hong Kong, I think he was yeah, Hong Kong. Yeah, I think so. Anesthesiast. Is that what you call it? Anesthesia... Anesthesician? <laughs> what is the word for that? I don't know. I think I'm gonna call it. Okay. Anyway. That that guy. <laughs> <laughs> that puts in the epidural, basically. Um, the epidural guy. The epidural guy. So he was... He had a Hong Kong accent. Everybody spoke English. Um, so he... He was like this like super chill dude, a little bit older, and he was like, Ma'am, I've been doing this for 30 years, I've not paralyzed anyone, you can trust me. So I was like, oh, okay, fine, please do it. The nurse came to give me an IV into my hand, 
she put it in and I immediately felt like it was my right hand I immediately felt like a jolt through my hand yeah and I was like you hit my nerve you hit my nerve and she was like jolting back and I was like ah no it's impossible I said yes you you hit my nerve and my finger went like really painful and numb she kind of like okay let me try again so she tried again on the same hand or a different hand but then she couldn't get it in and by by that time by that point she was so like I was frantic and still in pain bless that nurse she must have done that a million times and just messed it up once and then she lost all of her confidence at the second time when it also didn't really get in properly so she called a, a second midwife to um, to administer the IV so I was like this is not going off to a great start because if I'm already having trouble getting out a very simple IV, <laughs> that's not a good sign. You have to have an IV in order to have an epidural. The anesthetician, whatever the word is, um, he put in the epidural. So you first get a small needle on the injection side, which numbs the area, to put in a very big needle, which is the epidural. And honestly, the small needle is just like getting a vaccination or something. It's like a tiny needle. It's like no big deal. And then you can't feel anything. Like the area is numb. So I didn't feel the big needle for the epidural going in at all. Did you watch any of that or you? No, I'm, I'm pretty scared. <laughs> he doesn't like to watch no. anything. No. So the, the epidural was in and I could immediately feel this kind of rush of coolness kind of running down my spine. It's the most wicked feeling ever. And within a couple of minutes, I started getting numb. So basically from my waist down all the way to my legs, I just went numb. And it went, the right leg I think was completely gone, or the left leg, I don't remember which one, was just completely gone. Like I could maybe feel like the top of my toe and the other the other leg, I could still like kind of move my, le my foot, which meant that during the rest of my labor, whenever I had to be moved, Mao had to basically pick up my leg and just like rearrange it because I couldn't, I couldn't move it. And it's super heavy, right? Legs are really heavy. I I think it, all these things are very stre too stressful and traumatizing. I think I, my memory tried to erase it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really remember all the details. I think you remember more detail than me. Why did I, I bring you here? I, I think I chose to to delete erase that memory. <laughs> <laughs> so oh I was God. very scary. It's just very uh, traumatizing. Thing going on. <laughs> Traumatizing for you? Everybody, for, for everybody. It's just uh, really scary because you, you don't really know what happened. You know, like even the epidural, those kind of things. For me, I, I would think, you know, the baby's in there and then the body's numb. It's like, I don't know. The baby's numb too. Yeah, but maybe, yeah, but also after the epidurals, you kind of calm down, but also the. Um, I think the baby also calmed down too. So I, yeah. So yeah. I wonder. Well, the, baby, so, the, the so the way that an epidural works is that it <sighs> it, it basically it, it's directly injected into your nerves, so yeah. it doesn't actually touch yeah. the baby. So, but you know, I'm I'm not an expert. I, I don't know. I cannot you know speak Are with you? any any authority. But the thing is, for me, I I just think based on my experience I just think the science is basically changing the mind every 10 years no so okay so maybe maybe will not but uh, but definitely it, baby did calm down after the epidural yeah yeah so but I think it's mostly because also like they are connected to you mm. and if the mother is in stress because mm. I was clearly in a lot of stress physically mm. emotionally yeah. like every three mm. minutes very 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 painful contractions mm. and then non-stop for at that point probably 17 hours or so yeah. counting the time from from back home yeah and i think that also makes the baby more stressed and the heart rate and everything go up mm. and nothing was progressing like one to 1.5 centimeters dilation means the baby didn't even drop and like go anywhere there was no way of 
you know, progressing the labor at all. So once I got like once the epidural fully kicked in, it was heaven. It was so so good. Now I know that not everybody has the perfect epidural experience. I know that some moms I've talked to had, for example, only half of their body properly par paralyzed, <laughs> numb. Uh, numb. Um, while like the other half was still feeling stuff, or they had, um, or it didn't work properly, or maybe it wasn't inserted properly, or like there's many many different stories. But in my case, Jesus Christ, thank God for modern medicine. That was just the best thing ever. I couldn't feel most of the, I could feel some of the contraction, like I could feel like there was something going on, but I had no pain. And I literally slept. Like I was so exhausted after all of that, that I pretty soon fell asleep. Yeah. I think you had a nap too. And the midwife... No, I, I went home to walk the dog. Because <laughs> we have dog at home, <laughs> you know. <laughs> he went home to walk the dog. Um, but it was—I mean, I was still so little dilated that it was like a safe window to go home because that baby wasn't coming any any minute. So you went home. I slept, and they came every couple of hours and they woke me up and checked my dilation. And I remember the first time they checked after, I don't know, maybe two hours of sleep or so. And I was already four centimeters dilated. And I was like, woohoo, yes, awesome. I didn't even do anything, you know, I didn't feel anything. Uh, so basically from there, I was just chilling. I was mostly napping. And I just went, every time they came, they were like, okay, six centimeters. Okay, eight centimeters. It was five or a little bit before five in the morning of the seventh that the midwife said, okay, we're gonna get ready to push. You're 10 centimeters dilated. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> well, that was many hours. That was many from, hours. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, from that point, it was still another probably 10 hours. Yeah, that was uh, from the epidural, right? From the epidural. From the epidural to the birth, that was another 10 hours, yeah, basically. Yeah. But it was chilled. Yeah, 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 true. True. And every time, so they, they, the, the epidural with the medicine of the epidural, I don't know what to call that, that was hanging up there and I had this little um, button that was connected to the tube and whenever I could feel that it was getting too painful, I could like push that button and it would send another dose down my spine. Mm. So I was like fully drugged up. <laughs> For the whole time. Was there anything interesting that happened in that time? In that 10 hours? That I forgot? No. Apart I, from you walking the dog and coming back? I just want to try to get by. I'm like, man. Now, I remember you also had a nap at some point. Maybe. I, I, don't, I don't remember. I mean, it was I, stressful I, My, my memory too. was just keep erasing. Yeah, I told that <laughs> the, this guy is totally useless for being here. Like, I, I brought you in here to fill in the gaps, but like... You know nothing, Jon Snow. No, I, I remember something. I remember it's very hard. It's a long <laughs> process. So long, it's, uh, it's pretty scary. But yeah, it was yeah. like 5 o'clock. I was all kind of hooked up in terms of... I think they prepared... They, were, my, were my legs on stirrups? Huh? Uh? Stirrups, the things that hold my legs up. I had that, right? I don't think so. So how did I? No, I must be. How did? I don't know. I give birth. Oh my god! I try. So I try not. I try not to look because because it. <laughs> but you must know. I no no no. My, I'm just no, hanging no, no. out there. Just so. No no no. There there, there, there must have been stirrups because I remember you lifting my leg up. In yes, I, I I did maybe lift your so, leg and all that. So stuff. yeah. So so there are stirrups because obviously you have like your legs up to give birth. Uh you're pretty light, pretty. You're not heavy, so I don't really remember. <laughs> so flattering. <laughs> they told me, okay, we'll get ready for pushing, and that got me worried because I couldn't feel anything. Like the nether regions were completely numb, and I was like, how do I know? 
I'm pushing. You have the muscle, but you don't know how to activate it, so to say. When they started telling me, okay, now start pushing, so I was trying to imagine the pressure, the pressing, uh, the pressing feeling, and the muscles. And just doing it, but I didn't know if I was actually pushing. So in my head, I'm like, what if I'm just making a face, going, but actually I'm doing nothing. What if that's the case? But it's it sounded from the midwives and the, the doctor that it was working. And, um, and we had this monitor, which was monitoring um, around my belly the contractions. So Mao's job was basically looking at the monitor and seeing when the spike was coming, when the contraction was coming, <coughs> and telling me, like, oh, it's coming, it's coming, and then push. So I was basically just going off the monitor, knowing that there's a contra contraction. But I really couldn't feel that much. I so you're just it. faking it. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> What's that supposed to do? I can't <laughs> feel anything. <laughs> Anyway, it was a really good act. <laughs> it was convincing. Very convincing. Everybody's, yeah, honestly, like, I didn't... Everybody's <laughs> impressed. It was 35 minutes. 5 o'clock, they told me I'd get ready. 5.20. Mm. I started pushing. And she was born at 5.55. And then they put her on my chest, as it was my, my, my wish. Yeah. So fully out of the womb, all white and slimy, <laughs> I put her on my chest. And it was so overwhelming because it's, it was this really, really long time of pain. First, of course, the, the first baby is your first baby, so I was anticipating it so much. I was thinking so much about how this birth going to go. And like trying to avoid C-section that was constantly on my head. And then finally, you know, so many hours of contractions and pain and then getting the epidural and then sleeping through it. And and then all of a sudden you have this baby on your chest that was like, oh, that, was, that was something that was really overwhelming. After that, that's where kind of my memory goes a bit hazy. After the birth, because they did, it did she wasn't on my chest for very long, it was a few seconds. Mm. Right. Mm. Did you hold her immediately? Yeah, I hold her immediately. Oh, but <laughs> the cord. Um, so it's. I don't know when that happened. That started the uh, cord cutting. Uh, I think it started somewhere in the fifties, sixties, maybe later sixties, seventies. That dads were asked to cut the cord, because before that, definitely it wasn't a thing. In the Western world, at least, I don't know, China mm. probably also not. No, definitely not China because men were never yeah, in the Yeah, men were not even allowed to be in the room. So in a, in a public hospital, when you give yeah. birth in a public hospital, you're doing this by yourself. So um, for most Chinese women, that means they're in a room with multiple women for labor in terms of going through the process of dilating. And then once they finally give birth, they might be by themselves mm. in a room mm. or maybe i don't know depends on hospital but there's no visitors and there's no husbands you're doing that all by yourself so kudos to anyone giving birth in a public hospital i wouldn't have been able to do that without you i probably smashed your hand <laughs> holding your hand yeah. during all those times of contractions i wouldn't have been able to do that without you like you were, you were really big support, Good. emotionally. Good. <laughs> this something. We talked about. So this is part of your birth plan, right? You talk about this with your uh, doctor before birth, and I asked Mao before the birth, like, do you want to cut the cord? And he, his reaction was like, Ooh, do I have to? No. <laughs> that was your reaction. You no. were like, oh, do I have to? Do I have to? <laughs> and I was like, no, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Because, like, he's quite squ squirmish when it comes to those kind of bodily things. Blood, yeah. wounds, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't care. I think, like, as long as you don't regret it one day, that you didn't do it, if, if that's not something you want to do. I, th I think there's, uh, personally, honestly, that's everyone's 
own choice, but I don't think it's like that significant of a thing. I don't, um, regret, I don't regret at all. <laughs> so we, you didn't cut the cord, the, the midwives cut the cord, but mm. did you hold her after the cord was cut? Yeah, right after. Right after? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then I think you gave her away to the nurses and they kind yeah. of cleaned her, put those eye drops in and like weighed her and checked her vitals and stuff. But she was very good with me. Like, if she cries, if I hold her, she immediately calmed down. Yeah. Like, I'm the... Started from the right... Yeah, from, from the... the yeah, very beginning. I'm like, I'm the person, if, if I hold her, she doesn't cry. Yeah, and then she was um, clean and everything, and then given back to me. They don't actually wash the baby. I don't know if it's different in other countries, but apparently that layer that they come born with, that kind of white milky layer, is very protective for their skin and very good for them so they don't like wash the babies until like two days later so they just kind of like cleaned her a bit and wrapped her up and then gave her to me back i had to get stitches mm. and i don't remember how many stitches i got it can't be that many but it felt like an eternity of getting <clears throat> stitched so thankfully i had the epidural so i didn't feel any of that pain because i've heard from other moms who didn't have epidurals that the stitching after you just gave birth if you are if you have tears is really bad so I didn't feel any of that which was great obviously this the epidural had stopped at this point and then roughly how long maybe two hours later I was already completely feeling everything back and was able to go to the bathroom and walk around and then I think one or two hours after that they transferred us to a to the final room so basically the room where you give birth and the room where you stay for another a night or two is a different room and then I said I, I need to go back and walk the dog again <laughs> pretty soon after that <laughs> was that before we transferred rooms or after after yeah after everything settled after everything was settled, <laughs> he left again to walk the dogs again. I really thought you were going to have more <laughs> I, content. I, I, thought, I, I think you remember, you have a better memory than me. But I generally have a better yeah, memory Yeah, you generally you. have a better memory than me. So uh, I don't really remember those things. and uh, I just remember generally. Like, you know, the, I, I remember the good things. You know, for example, I hold her and she doesn't cry. That's just super sweet. But uh, for those traumatizing experiences... We also and, did skin to skin relatively yeah, quickly, Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And then immediately. Like, you know, and you asked me to take the shirt off. <laughs> and, then, and then I was like holding the baby. So you, you said, oh, it's important to do the skin to skin. And I was like, all right. And, and then, uh, so everything's all cool. So I remember the good things, you know. So I, I... Do you remember the first thing that you thought when you held her or saw her or something like that? My thought very simple. Because uh, had after uh, hold the baby, the first thing that come to my mind was just like the, all the parents, my my mom, my dad, and then you know my mom especially, uh, and then experience those things. I think people always say, oh, you know, giving birth is hard and all those kind of things. But when when you don't really experience it, you don't know how hard it is. And then when you actually experience it firsthand, you have a different level of appreciation of parents they they experienced so much especially at that time the hospital experience. i mean your mom yeah did she give birth in the hospital yes 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 because i mean a lot of people did yeah and then she doesn't home and she didn't then. even have like an epidural and all these no stuff. that was no, not she, available yeah so like and then a new kind of appreciation for my own parents and also every time when i see other parents I would feel differently towards them because actually before my own baby I'm not re I don't really care about other baby that much honestly like I'm just speaking the truth you know I'm not like oh baby so nice like those kind of things just like okay it's a kid so but having my own baby it it brought a new level of awareness every time when other parents pass by I would feel like oh man I know you can like well, comrade, yeah, comrade. Comrade yeah, so I know where you have been, you know, that kind of thing. You know, my thoughts just stretch far, far, far further away. And then now you're thinking about, 
Oh man, she grow up one day, she'll leave me. <laughs> you already thought that. I already first, thought about the first, first day. yeah, the very beginning. Yes, the very beginning. So all these thoughts just basically from generation passed down to another generation. So I was like, oh, someday she's gonna leave me, and you know, it's so heartbreaking, you know, those kind of thing. Aww. Yeah, just that's it. I think it's pretty simple and pretty linear as well. I do not remember what I thought. I think I was just feeling quite overwhelmed, quite happy. I remember thinking like, is that it? That that was it now? Now I'm a mom? Like, you know, you have like this nine, almost ten months of build up of being pregnant and like talking to your belly and rubbing your belly and being like, mm -hmm, I'm gonna be a mom. But it's like, like none of it really manifests and none of it really is real. And then all of a sudden I'm looking next to me and there's this little bassinet with this little squirmish little thing. And it's just like, th what? Like this came out of me and now there's nothing left inside of me? And like, what? <laughs> I yeah, think that people, whole... Like, people talking about getting like mentally prepared. I'm like, what are you talking about? I, I don't really... I, I never <laughs> mentally prepared for this. I'm just like, <clears throat> day by day, I just like, you know, when it happened, it happened. I think you can't be prepared. Yeah, I think you can't so be it's prepared kind of wasting, for what wasting, it actually is, like I mean, what it actually means. Physical prepare, pre preparation is good. Like you need to have those, you know, accessories, the baby stuff. The baby stuff. That's that's definitely sure. For me, just the feeling of like, wow, I'm a mom now. I'm I'm not sure what that means. I didn't feel <sighs> different, you know. I didn't feel like all of a sudden I had become a mom in terms of there was something different about me. I was exactly the same person. I had just given birth and it was a crazy experience, but it, did, it didn't feel different. It's hard to explain. Yeah. And sometimes I think I still feel no different. And I have a two year old now and literally within probably two weeks, I'll have a second baby, but I still don't feel like a mom. Like, I don't know what that is. I don't, I don't think there's any difference to who I was before. I for just, me, for I me, just have the, kids. <laughs> for me, I do have a difference. Like you know, when before I have my own baby, for me, pretty much all the baby look the same. I, they all look alike. But after having my own baby, I start to differentiate. I know, I know. I was like, oh, that baby look like this. Oh, that baby look different. Look like that. I start to see, appreciate baby more. And then also I'm more willing and more actually like to look at other babies. Different feeling towards baby than before, you know. Yeah, this may be a man thing. Maybe it's my, it's my genetics kind of like, I always, I mean, I was never, I was never that kind of, person that I would look at a baby and go like oh my god I need a baby now like my ovaries are on fire like <laughs> no that never happened to me I always wanted kids my whole life like since I've been a child you know role-playing having puppet like dolls and stuff I always knew I wanted kids maybe m mentally changed more for you than it did for me yes definitely I, I see I see parents differently I see kids differently and I appreciate them more, much, much more. And I also appreciate my parents much, much more. I have to say that the first Mother's Day for me, when you kind of have this like, oh, appreciate your mom, that was really emotional for me because I was like, now I really appreciate my mom. You know, I mean, you always do, but once you become a mom yourself and you know how hard it is and how much suffering there is, I got so emotional thinking like, oh my god, mom, how did you do it? <laughs> I'm so, so thankful. And then like thinking also like, you know, it's not just the baby years. Like I was a terrible teenager on top of that. <laughs> and my mom somehow pulled through. Like that appreciation that you had already during the birth that came for me kind of after the first couple of months of kind of suffering. <laughs> that was, yeah. Yeah, the more of course, the more suffering we had later on, <laughs> the, the more appreciation. appreciation. I, 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 yeah, it kind of a uh, provoked, you know, towards you know the appreciation towards my parents. I'm just glad we're sitting down and doing this now, and then I'm hoping we're gonna document a little bit more for the second one, so that the memories are a bit more fresh. In a couple of years, for sure, so many of those details will be gone mm. from the birth. So it's good yeah. to have it like have it recorded and have it done and also maybe for Nora to sometime 
at, at one point in the future watch, watch it and be like, oh my god, my, my parents are so silly. <laughs> <laughs> Why did they do this? Why did they make a video about my birth? I'm pretty sure of that. Hey, Noah, <laughs> how you doing? It's like, Daddy always wears old clothes. He's not so cool. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you very much for watching. And um, let us know if you have any other questions about, you know, birth in China, having kids in China, being parents in China. We'll gladly answer them in another time. Yeah, that's it for now. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And um, we'll see you in another video. Mm -hmm. Bye!